Walpole Film Festival started in 2003 as one of the first high school film festivals in the country. The program has been recognized nationally as a model for creativity and collaboration in the classroom. Students in the program are required to follow each step in modern independent digital filmmaking. This includes screenwriting, acting, art direction, shooting on digital cameras, editing on professional software, and composing original music. The festival culminates each year with a red carpet ceremony that celebrates the achievements of each crew. To learn more about this year's Walpole Film Festival and how to become a sponsor, please visit our website, walpolefilmfestival.com. Thank you and enjoy the movie. Good. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.
had his first seizure the morning after he had a head injury when he was at daycare. I got a call at work that he had had an accident and he um, had a head injury in which he lost a lot of blood. And so he went to the emergency room, we took him there, they did wound treatment for him, he came home, and it was the very next morning that I saw the first, um, it was like a, a dull little stare, and it only lasted a second. You know, you know your child, and it wasn't something that you would normally see. They had him go for an EEG, which is a diagnostic test that is done, where they put electrodes on your brain and they check your brain waves and that came back pretty abnormal so from there we got an appointment with a very good specialist at New England Medical Center who felt as though he was probably going to have really low functioning. Um, my name is Elizabeth Antiel and I am Director of Pediatric Epilepsy at the Mass General Hospital for Children. Eric has refractory or intractable epilepsy. Epilepsy is simply defined as two or more seizures. So a seizure can kind of be simply defined as a abnormal electrical activity. And seizures basically come in two main forms. One is called focal, uh, which means that it starts in one area of the brain and what the seizure then looks like depends on the area of the brain the seizure comes from. Um, so the left side of my brain controls the right side of my body around here is the motor strip. So if I had a seizure activity coming from here, then this could be my seizure, just jerking of my hand that I wouldn't be able to stop. The other main type of seizure is what Eric has, and that's called a generalized seizure. And what a generalized seizure is, is kind of at the seizure onset, the abnormal activity affects the whole brain. Um, and so general seizures, by definition, people kind of are not conscious during them. They're not aware what's going on. And they sometimes can recall they've had one, like Eric knows when he's had one, uh, mainly because he comes out of it and realizes he's you know, probably just had a seizure. So we go without medicine, and it gets a little bit stronger each year. Then by the time he's heading into kindergarten, it's at a point where we feel like We've been seeing the doctors regularly visiting them, they, and we decide he's going to take a medicine. So we, we, we start him on a medicine which affects his learning abilities, because what it is, it shuts off things. So when those electrodes burst, they got little blocks in his brain and stop it. That's the purpose of the medicine, but it also has other adverse effects in terms of learning and memory. And paying and, attention. And we noticed that his memory was not as good as it was when he started taking the medicines it used to be. And, um, so that was the start of a journey. A journey. <laughs>
If you could calculate the number of seizures Eric has probably had in his lifetime, if you take since one and a half, he's now 20, he's had seizures almost at, really every day, mm -hmm. and at least probably 10 a day. Um, there are days. Yeah, maybe. Maybe a lot. Yeah, it's, some it's days are average. bad. And, yeah, if you averaged it out, maybe eight. So that would be eight maybe a day more. times 365 times 18 and a half years. I mean, it's a lot of seizures, and I think that also just that cumulative load of seizures could also have some impact on really his ability to function as well as he could. meet up at the front table. So Noel and Katie and Ryan and Harry and Robbie, yes. My name is Eric Fallon. I was born December 26, 1993. I try to make the best out of my day and I try to live life to the fullest and I try to just do what other people can do except, except I have these years and I try not to let them affect of what I do. There's certain classes in school I can't go to, certain, like, I can't, like, um, try out for, like, the high school hockey, hockey team, football team, those stuff, so I can't do that, but there's certain things I can do, and that I will probably, uh, try to do, even though I can't do certain things. It's hard, but I try to do my best because I know that I'm gonna have them for my la the rest of my life. And so I try to just live life to the fullest and do what I can. Does it phase you? Yes, it phases me. Hey, Harry. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Hey, Harry, you. There's like 11 different pieces of gum on my shoe. <laughs> Whoever denied it supplied it. Why would I sabotage my lead actor? Because maybe you don't like the way he's acting. When was the last time I brought gum into school? Like, here. Here, you know what? Search my bag. Search my bag for gum. I don't need to search your bag because that's on my shoe. I found it. I have lipstick in my bag, but that's the only thing that I have in there that is non that is not gum. Why do you have lipstick in your bag, Eric? It's my mom's. It's my mom's lipstick. Yeah, why is it in your bag? No further comments. Eric, let's play two truths and a lie. My first name's Harrison, my last name's Berkland, and she didn't just film you. <laughs> She didn't film it was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Courtney Buds, the special education teacher in Tier 2 of the Career and Education Program at Walpole High School. The Career and Education Program is a program here at the high school for students with special needs. It consists of two classrooms, a Tier 1 classroom, which are the younger students. They are the 9th through 12th graders. They focus on functional academics like reading, writing, math, science, social studies, and social skills. They also work on pre-vocational skills, some in-school internships such as the, working in the attendance office, setting up the cafeteria, sorting the school mail. They work on these skills to prepare them for Tier 2, which is my classroom. It's the older students, ages 18 to 22. We also focus on functional academics, mostly reading, writing, and math skills, as well as social skills. And a big component of our program, or our tier of the program, is the vocational piece. Our students have the opportunity to access a number of community internships. Some of our community internships are Watson's Candies, Beecher Pharmacy, and HESCO Meals on Wheels, where the students pack the meals for the elderly and also deliver the meals. 
It's too hot and too regular. I gotta keep it. You're in my bed right here. Ha ha, man, the man. Thank you, thank we'll bring you all so the much. Girl. We'll bring all the girls for you. Uh, oh, all right, I'm ready. I'm ready for them. Jake, <laughs> can you open the other door? Yep. Best Buddies is an organization that aims to create friendship opportunities between students that have disabilities and non-disabled peers. So here at Walpole High School we have a program that operates after school and on weekend nights once a month. So we try to match up students in friendships, we try to go to school sporting events and other extracurricular activities and to try to give students those opportunities to meet someone that they may not have already met or somebody that may have um, different interests or kind of you know a different story than their own. You know Eric is somebody that gets a lot out of Best Buddies. He really enjoys it. His role kind of is somebody that we can count on him to pump people up for upcoming activities. He can go around and you know, introduce himself to new members at different meetings. You know, I, I'm glad that we have someone in and students like Eric in the program because they kind of keep us moving forward and give us some fresh ideas about how we can improve our, our club. So we try to make a welcoming atmosphere. We try to make students feel comfortable with disabilities. Eric is, you know, a social butterfly. He's able to go around and interact with different students there's a huge Best Buddies dance coming up. All the kids love it. Eric will be dancing, as always. He loves that. It's going to be great. I just want to welcome everybody here uh, to the Best Buddies dinner dance. <laughs> I've been part of the Best Buddies program now for two years, and I can't picture my life without it. It's a great program. I think everybody should join or be a part of it. Eric always has a great outlook on life, regardless of his situation, so it's a pretty good lesson for me, as well as everybody else in Best Buddies. Uh, and it's my last year. Wish oh. me good luck. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's my last year again last year. Um, and I'm sure I can speak for both of us when I say Best Buddies is definitely one of the best things we've ever done. Um, we're proud of it. We love it. It's a fantastic thing. We miss Best Buddies. Yeah, we miss Best Buddies. And uh, I'll head over to Ryan now. I'm Molly Shea. I'm the job coach coordinator uh, for the Career and Education program. On their 22nd birthday, our students leave Walpole High School, whether their birthday is in June or October, they have to leave on their 22nd birthday. Before that, the school sends out paperwork to the state. The state then decides what agency is most appropriate for the student. All right, so we just wanted to thank you all for being here today. All of you have been a part of Peter's life in one way or another, whether it be big or small, and I know he is so happy to see you all here today. I have had the privilege of being Peter's teacher for the past two years. <laughs> Peter's compassion and caring are so apparent in some of his best qualities. Peter asks about your life because he truly wants to know and cares. When he knows you're upset or stressed, he tries to make you smile. We will certainly miss Peter's smile around the halls of Walpole High School. 
So many of you have known Peter longer than I have, and I know he has touched each and every one of your lives and made it better just by being in it. Peter, we're all here today to celebrate the amazing young man that you have grown up to be, and we wish you the best of luck at Life Works. You will be missed. I'm Nicole and I'm Eric's sister. Growing up with Eric has been and continues to be a privilege. He's a great older brother and he's really supportive and he's a great role model since he's able to retain such a happy disposition through so many hardships. Eric is extremely tough and has a great outlook on life which is truly inspiring. He has made me, along with many others, more empathetic and has made me a better person. Around the house, Eric is just his normal self. Eric likes to watch TV, play games, and voices usually strong opinions on um, current events in the media. Here, I'm putting it up to, yeah. to the news. Oh, what do you wish? No, really. No. I have some news headlines for the day. I already know the news headlines for today. Justin Bieber arrested. Most of all, Eric loves to laugh and make others laugh. So if he ever has a joke or has a funny video to show, he's eager to show it to others. And his humor can easily make your day. Hey, Teddy! Just got home from school and now my friend Sean's coming over. Booyah! I think we do what uh, normal kids would do, you know, just hang out like normal friends, you know, watch TV, play video games. Obviously, it's a little different, you know, you can't be as active because of the seizures, but, you know, try and do, yeah, just what normal friends do together. Hang out. You're not doing, you feel like you're not doing anything. I don't care if you are. Check, right? Oh, yeah. <sighs> With uh, the follow-up from all the medication that he takes and his team of doctors, obviously everyone is hopeful and optimistic that this will cease to a degree, whether it be the intensity and frequency of the seizures or just overall in general, so he can have a lot more independence and freedom. Really at this time, he's not a surgical candidate. When the doctors have the ability to see exactly where your seizure is starting from, a lot of times they can go in and do some surgery and it's been really successful. His seizures are generalized, so they're throughout the brain and they haven't been able to exactly pinpoint where that starting point or focal point is. If we were able to do that, then Eric would have surgery as an option. And during the surgery you go in and you actually remove the part of the brain that's causing the seizures. And that ranges from a small area of the brain uh, to sometimes we remove the whole half of the brain in some kids. I think he realizes his potential, but I also think he understands the limitations that are put on him because of his seizure disorder. At times I think it bothers him, but he's also an intense young man that wants to do the best that he can. So even given that fact that he has seizures and he knows that it limits him, he's learning how to deal with it, and I think that makes him even stronger. So about 2% of people, both children and adults, develop epilepsy sometime during their life, and epilepsy is really defined as two or more seizure episodes. About a third of people who develop epilepsy, and that includes children and adults, um, develop a seizure disorder similar to Eric's, that the seizures are not controlled by medications, um, and we have to think of other ideas. I spent a lot of time with him, and I saw things that come very easy for other people how tough they can be for him. I think that if Eric can deal with the issues that he has to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and keep a smile on his face and a positive attitude and a positive outlook on life, it just makes me feel like my problems are so trivial. Oh, Eric is very unique in many ways. <laughs> like most of the kids I take care of his age have never met anyone else that has seizures. And a lot of kids his age become very depressed. We had two suicide attempts last year. 
in a way, Eric's lucky in that, that he has had seizures. He doesn't remember life without seizures. Whereas if kids have seizure onset when they're adolescents, I, invariably they become very depressed. And that's why he's been always very brave, honestly, because it never really kept him from doing what he wanted to do, whether it was play baseball or do whatever, he just did it. And at one point you were having like easily over 30 or 40 seizures every day. I have been always extremely impressed by his attitude and his resilience, and as I've told him many times, I think he's a superhero. I think if I had to describe Eric in three words, I would describe him as personable. You know, Eric has a great personality about him. To describe him in three words, which is hard to do, is the first one would be funny. I guess I would say charismatic. So Eric is nice. Determined. Persevering. Friendly. Exceptional. Positive. Passionate. He's smart. Optimistic. Stubborn. Social. Funny. Funny. Hysterical. Funny. And comical. Positive. I think Eric is um, bold. Resilient. Inspiring. And a good friend. I would like the message of this film to be is to have people understand epilepsy a little bit better and knowing that we as a family see opportunity for his epilepsy to be cured in the future, although we've not had much success up to this point. He's a special person and we like to share this with others. Well, I hope what people get out of this film is that they see how positive and resilient Eric is and how well he handles his life. You know, we're going to be looking for opportunities for him to continue to grow and mature as a person, and just how proud we are of him. I like them to just learn a lot more about people and their disabilities, and for people to just treat me as like any other kid, not just like a person that has seizures. Even though I have a disability, it doesn't mean that you have to treat me differently. They don't have to be like scared that, oh, his house is here. They don't have to scare me. Just treat me like you would treat any of the kids that's walking down the hall. I bent down on my back, so I'm going to continue to fight, and I'm not going to give up till I'm dead. I can still be just like any one of the people in like the high school, and I can, I, even though I had this disability, I can still get through a day. We like to thank all the people that have really enriched Eric's life in all the time that he spent in the Walpole school system. He's had great teachers and he's had particularly excellent aides, um, and there's too many of them to name, but we want to thank everyone that has helped him out. Eric, please describe yourself in three words. Uh, charismatic, smart, and handsome. I mean, come on. Teddy, any last words about Eric?